Your offense is looking real, real dynamic. We got Jerry Judy. We got yep. Coop. We got Elijah yep. Moore. Yes, we sir. We got Chubb and Joe Yes, sir. Yes, we got sir. you behind center. Is For this sure. everything you need to win a Super Bowl? Welcome to QB Unplugged with superstar NFL quarterback Deshaun Watson, me, myself, the quarterback and Saul Quincy Avery, brought to you by Lockerverse Tapping. Join the Dog Pound community for exclusive content. Hit the like button, su- subscribe button, all that. Each week, we're going to bring you a unique perspective from the quarterback position. Not only Deshaun, but top quarterbacks around the world, high school, college, NFL. What up, though? What's happening, QA? Man, not much. I'm looking forward to this episode where we get to cover your reaction to Jerry Judy joining the Browns. Yeah. Um, the free agency going crazy. Out here looking like right. a maddest season. season. Trades, free agency, everybody going everywhere. We're going to break down a play for the folks. And then you got to give me an update on the recovery. You feeling good about that? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, chop Let's it up, make man. it happen. Let's make it happen. Man, I don't want to jump in too early. We'll get to this, Jerry Judy. But are you looking at the free agency news going on out here in the NFL? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, ain't it? I mean, you got everybody switching teams and guys getting paid. So it's good to see, man. It's good to see the guys get what they deserve. You feel me? So I'm excited about that. I'm actually, I, I was on the phone looking at it on uh, the Twitter update. So just really, I'm just refreshing the whole time, seeing what's next. <laughs> so you work with Super Asian David Mulgetta. Yeah. Are you tapping in with him like, yo, what's up with such and such? You know, all the dudes who are on your, who are signed with David as well, because he got so many other guys, other quarterbacks, so many other things. Are you, are you right. tapping in on that? Uh, no, nah, not, not so much uh, like I used to. I think when I was younger, when I was going through my contract and stuff like that, um, the first one in Houston, uh, I used to tap in and see what's, what was going on. But, you know, right now I just kind of let it flow. You know what I'm saying? I'm just really locked in on my recovery, but I'm staying in tune to what's going on around the league. Uh, but I kind of know how David operate, though. So if any guys that's on the free agent or the, yeah, the free agent market, uh, market uh, is definitely, you know, going out to that bag for sure. Oh, Dave's going to get the bag. If there's one thing he's going to get, he's going <laughs> he to – is there ever a time throughout your career, like, is there, was there a moment when you've been doing this that you was like, all right, man, it don't even make sense to be asking about the free agent market. Was there ever a time you, like, thought a deal was going through that it didn't go through, and you're like, damn, I don't even – like, he can't even tell me. Uh, shit, it really happened every year. I feel like every offseason it happens, especially when it open up. You think that you're going to get – especially when you're on a certain team or you might hear such and such and such, and then say, you know, they go to a whole different team. Like, uh, even with my situation, you know what I'm saying? It was just like a lot of people was hearing different things, and, uh, you know, I ended up choosing Cleveland, and uh, I thought that was the best situation for me. So, you know, it just depends on the player, really. Then we see someone like Kirk Cousins get the bag four years, 180, <laughs> 100 million guaranteed, when you see yeah. something like him going to Atlanta, is that something that gets you excited? Like, oh, shit, he's damn near 35 getting paid, you know what I'm saying, this crazy amount of money this late in his career. When you see deals like that, what you think? I mean, uh, yeah, of course. But I think I think people uh, forget, though, Kirk is a good player. I think we was talking about it in the other episode. Like, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. You feel me? Like, uh, you know, certain things didn't go his way last year, you know, got injured, so hope he's healing well and things like that. But I think Atlanta's a good fit for him, uh, especially if he wanted to change out of Minnesota. It's so funny to me seeing him go to Atlanta. Like, we heard all this talk about Justin Fields, another David client, going to Atlanta. Yep. We heard about – we saw the little Instagram video. It's funny talking to him and all those guys, like how videos like that get misconstrued by the media. But Facts. even the G- – even the head coach talking about, like, we want a quarterback who's fit for Atlanta. Everything, like, every sign points to Justin Fields being that quarterback. And then Almost they, hit you with the cur- they hit you with that curveball, and you see Kurt go. And I think Kurt is going to be a perfect fit in this West Coast style offense. They do a lot of the same concepts and principles of things he did with the Vikings. So I think it's going to be seamless 
only thing is going to be that vocab. But I think kind of you have an experience of transitioning from one offense with a vocabulary, and then maybe hearing some similar words, but they mean different stuff. Uh, how long does it yeah. take you to get accustomed to that? Uh, I mean, it took you. It, it took you a lot of reps. I feel like all of spring for sure. Uh, but once you got the training camp, you kind of, you know, watch the tape. You watch, especially over the summer, you just watch all the tape on the iPad of what you did at OTAs, and then you just kind of go from there. You just kind of, you know, drilling in your brain as much as possible. And then when you get out there, it's the reps and then seeing it. But uh, I think Kirk gonna be good. You know, he's a smart individual. So, uh, you know, with him, you know, he done it before, so he'd be he'd be smooth. But I I know what you were saying though, like like you're saying, like the fit for the A. Cause we talked about that with Cam was like, yeah. we know what the Atlanta is looking for. Like the fan base is looking for a certain type, but at the a same certain, time, the organization wants, <laughs> yeah, but the organization wants something totally different. So I think he's going to win a lot of games, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think he immediately comes in the NFC South favorite right now because they got Kirk Cutter. For sure. Right? He's going to be that good. Yeah. They're going to be able to do that much. And then you got, you got another, you know, Hall of Fame level caliber quarterback joining the AFC North. Mm-hmm. Seen that. Yeah, we got Russell yeah, Wilson. Seen that. The crazy part is Russell Wilson only going to affect the catch like $1.5 million. So they're going to be able to add pieces around them. Yeah, they're going to put pieces around them for sure. No, nah, you know, Pittsburgh is a good organization, bro. And it's crazy for me to say that. I'm just keeping it 100 because, you know, I'm a Brown, mm-hmm. but. At the end of the day, you got to give respect where respect is due, you know, and, and Tomlin is, is going to have them boys right, and, you know, it just made sense for him to go there. I think it was them or New York, but New York is, you know, feel like they starting over, and where Pittsburgh feel like they got pieces, you know, with, just because of Tomlin, you know what I'm saying? So they going to compete, but, uh, yeah, welcome to the to the North, man, where things kind of get real, 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 real spooky, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it ain't going to be easy. It's funny because I was talking to some of these yeah, uh, Russ. Yeah, I was telling them, like, I, I thought the best fit for Russell Wilson would have been in Las Vegas, right? You got Devontae, yeah. you got pieces, you got an uh, uh, organization where a lot of a lot of strong players on the offensive side of the ball. Also, you're going to go to an offense that's more like free-flowing, right? Allows right. him to be that creative, that artist that he is, be free-flowing, and make plays. I think that Arthur Smith, although he's a great, he's a great play caller, great coordinator. I think he's more rigid in terms of like, mm-hmm. yo, we gonna go hard action. I need you to get your eyes around, find this linebacker, make a throw off him, reset to number two. I'm not sure if that over the middle of that passing game is something that really correlates with, with Russ's style. But it's just right. funny seeing, right? He came from that Denver. And I think Sean yeah. Payton, I'm gonna be honest. Sean Payton, I think he's to be one of the best coordinators in the NFL. But he's an old crusty. Like, he's not willing to bend <laughs> or, like, learn new shit. Like, he wants right, to do right, things right. the way that they've always done them. And I think that that little headstrongness with Russell, it didn't go well together. And I think that yeah. we see now more than ever, players got to do what's best for them because the organization is going to do what's best for them every, every single time. time. And I think we, <laughs> we see that more than anything with that Denver shit, like, Everybody get up out of there. Get out the paint, get out the paint. And when you give a head coach that 10-year contract, all that money, it gives them more power than I think they were probably prepared for. And it might have put their organization in a, in a bit of a, a tough spot for a long time to come. Nah, definitely. They don't have to definitely hit in the draft. <laughs> you feel oh. me? With some free agents. but uh, And they ain't even got yeah, the good picks. <laughs> so what they going to do at quarterback? Man, about to be Jared Stidham out there, man. Flying it. Is, is he still is he still on the roster? Yeah, Jared's still there. Okay. Ben Danucci, I think, they, is the the backup. I'm pretty they sure they draft one. Well, they they don't have a first round pick. They gave all that away oh, to get really. Rest. Don't Damn, have that first round pick. That. I that thought it was need. bad. No sir, not gonna be able to reload like you need to. Oh, so you gotta What's get it from one of these free agents there. Who they gonna get? Justin? I, I can't see Justin playing in the Sean Payton nah. offense. Not at all. But what would Justin Josh go? Josh Dobbs. No. Josh Dobbs, go ahead and buckle up. Jo- I, th- I think we can see Justin going to the Raiders, but everything about me feels like the Raiders really, really want Jaden Daniels, right? Um, okay. And AP has a, a relationship with not only Jaden, but his family from a long time back. 
I think he feels really comfortable with them. And I think that he uh I think that's someone he's gonna go try and get, try and make something happen with. What Pete the Raiders got? Not early enough to get Jaden. So I don't know what he's going to do. They definitely got a trade. They go, <laughs> man, they're going to have to give up the farm to get him. And I, I can't see, to me, Jaden is definitely the second best quarterback in the draft. I can't see the Washington uh, Commanders, or whatever, the Commanders, football team, whatever they call themselves now. I can't see them passing up Jaden Daniels to do something else. Not nah, fast. It's going to be interesting for sure. And then, and then, another David Moe get a client. T. Higgins done requested a trade. It's time. I knew it. 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 Hey, hey I told you from the jump. I knew it was coming. Like, we didn't actually, I, I, I didn't really come out and say that, but, like, I knew that if they were going to franchise tag him, that he was not going to stay there, for sure. This boy this boy acting like he didn't have an inside scoop. You might act like you don't text David <laughs> about nothing. But I know you text him like, yo, what's up with T? Like, how are we going to make this happen? <laughs> I mean, yeah, man, and David, we got a great relationship. We talk <laughs> now. So we, 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 I just, you know, a lot of different yeah. things. David ain't someone who looks like he's too uh, excited about the franchise tag. Do you, why, you getting paid top dollar. $21.8 million is what T would have got if he'd uh, played on the franchise tag. Why are y'all so against? I don't think fans understand why are y'all so against playing on the franchise team? I think um, I think it all depends on the situation and position sometimes and the timing of the franchise tag where it can work. But, you know, when you got guys that felt like they proved themselves and they want, they want to be secure long term, you know, you're not playing on that one year deal. You know what I'm saying? You're not hoping that everything goes perfect for you for you to get that bag because you're relying on that year. Now, of course, people might say, "Well, you don't. You're scared to compete. You're still getting paid." But like, at the end of the day, like I want to make sure I'm good for longevity. You know what I'm saying? Where if I got an opportunity to go to another team, where I can make sure I'm secure for the next couple of years. You know, living, playing, financial, all this stuff, rather than being here and not knowing my future. Then it's like. You know, what's, which one are you going to take? I'm going to make sure I'm secure for the next however many years before I just try to plan that one year deal. And sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It's definitely taking a risk. Yeah, and I think that people see the big number, but I don't think they realize how short these NFL careers are. Like, when you yeah, get your opportunity yeah, yeah. to get a new contract, franchise tag, to me, is one of the worst things in sports. And I really hope that you guys in the NFL PA do something about it because – you don't often get the opportunity to become a free agent. You did all the things that you needed to do, went through those first four or five years as a rookie, you know what I'm saying, on that rookie contract where you couldn't really get your, your fair value. And then for you to hit the free agent market and then just be like, nah, you stayed another year, not be able to negotiate and get your fair market is something that I really don't agree with. And I hope that you guys get fixed um, in the years to come, especially as you guys are about right. to add 18 games to the uh, – it's going to be 18 game season and not very long. So if y'all giving That's us that crazy. extra, y'all getting in the extra money, <laughs> y'all better make sure that y'all getting something in return. And another big signing, y'all got two. The Cleveland Browns just made two, two, two signature signings to keep a strong ass defense, a strong ass defense. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We just you got ZMO bad, man. Yeah. They got the energy, man. Yeah. <laughs> big Mo. And then, you know, Z, he go. <laughs> Yeah, all that. So, uh, it, and I bet everybody on the defense stoked because, you know, hey, I'm I'm turned up about it. We bringing the fellas back, you know, keeping that locker room intact, and uh, yeah, we we trying to make some some things shake this year for sure. It's a special defense. Got all them folks coming back. I'm super excited about it. Was you watching? No, that's the all free agency. But were you watching yeah. women's college basketball this past weekend? You know, it's crazy. I didn't watch it full, like a full game, but I had it on in the background for sure. Some games. Did you see now. Buddy jump out the stands? Whoa, whoa. Let me go I get did. it. I was confused. <laughs> I seen everybody talking about it. I'm like, damn, dog. Like, I mean, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. When I first saw it, I was confused on who, who that was. And I think it was, um, oh, what's her name? I think uh, it's Flo. Four. I didn't say Flo. Flo. Yeah. She a hooper. Number she four. a bucket. Uh, no, she yeah. Was, yeah. And she can rap too. 
You ever heard of rap? And the thing is, it's Fly J Johnson. Fly J, she, yeah, 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 yeah. She, she, nah, she, she talented, the girl. for sure. Oh, really? Super what talented. She from Savannah. She's super talented. Okay. Her brother yeah. was super tripping. I'm, I'm, yeah, for sure. I think that they, <laughs> they, they sent to me that, that boy was on one. He was on some whole other yeah, uh, My thing is, what are you going to do when you jump over the stands? You're not going to hit a girl. Not on national TV. Facts. May have got arrested. He he went out worse and I went out at the Clemson game. All right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, I got nah, arrested nah, at the nah, Clemson game. He's not saying <laughs> This man has gotten the salt charge. <laughs> but all of those got crazy. ejected. I think I think they're only going to be missing one for the playoffs. I think they reported it wrong. They're missing one for the playoffs. But I was excited. I like seeing LSU who they got some real special talents. Yeah, both of them to, teams is good. Hey, man, they South Carolina? Her. Young freshman for the LSU, though, Michaela Williams. I like what she's doing. She done hit a 42-point game. Yeah, I feel like, she's going crazy, too. I feel like she we see feature. something special. Something special with uh, women's college basketball. I hope that it translates over to the WNBA, but Kayla Clark, I think she's been out here. I think, it, I think it will. I think it will. Because I, I enjoy, be I think, in? you know, with the – Oh, for sure. Yeah, most definitely. Just because, like, I, I love just the energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, when I watched the, the sorry, I watched the the fourth quarter of the South Carolina LSU game and just the energy mm-hmm. of both teams and how the women was just, they were competing and trash talking and things like that. Like, you don't even really see that in college basketball like that no more. You know what I'm saying? But, like, on the women's side, you do. They battling. They out there competing. They going ahead. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it, it's good to see. It's funny because I'm definitely a women's college basketball over men's college basketball. Really? I'm NBA Didn't over WNBA, right? Like, I like watching women's college basketball because the same stuff you're talking about. They out here talking crazy. Caitlin Clark going crazy. <laughs> Juju Watkins yeah. out here giving people the drugs. Uh, and then they got the coolest coach in the game. I bet you was trying to Google Don Staley outfit after you done seen her on the <laughs> sideline. <laughs> <laughs> she be all here swagged out on y'all boys. Yeah, chill too. <laughs> I, I'm gonna coach these. I'm gonna coach these ladies, and hey, we gonna keep winning. <laughs> and you know what's crazy is I'm a tiger too, so I really shouldn't even be supporting those South Carolina teams. But hey, I gotta give respect where respect is, and and pay my dues. And then when them ladies balling for sure. Now that we got that wrapped up, women's college ball basketball definitely going crazy. Love seeing them do what they do. But now let me get into that trade. Your mm-hmm. offense is looking real, real dynamic. We got Jerry Judy. We got yep. Coop. We got Elijah yep. Moore. Yes, sir. We got Chubb and Joe Yes, sir. Yes, we got sir. you behind the center. Is First this show. everything you need to win a Super Bowl? We got the pieces. You feel me? Uh, I think we just got to put it all together. And, you know, once we all get healthy, and we get that opportunity while we all out there on the field at the same time for, you know, uh, uh, a full season. Hell yeah, we got the chance to do it. I think we Hello. got the defense, we got the offense, we got the special teams, we got the culture, we got the fan base. Like we got everything for it to do it. We just got to go do it now. A defensive coordinator who balling, offensive coordinator new in the box. I think he's gonna bring some something new, some dynamic to y'all. Great head coach, but I think we need to clap it up for Andrew Barry. I think Andrew Bray deserves a hand for the things that he's been doing, <laughs> uh, getting things done. But Fact. how do you feel? Like, what, what happened? How do you find out about a J? Do you, do you find out like we find out, or someone texts you like, "Hey, to check your phone." Uh, yeah, I I just get a I get I get a call from the from the higher ups. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, they let me know what's going on, and uh, you know we 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 tap in that way. So you know I kind of knew what was going on behind scenes for a long time too. Um and uh yeah we finally got it done. So you know it was some a person that uh is definitely definitely interested uh for us as an organization, as a team and uh we want to bring in. So, you know, add him with the with Elijah, with Coop, with with David Chubb, Jerome, and whoever else we add, D Bell, Tillman, um JD, all of us, man. Yeah, like we we got the pieces to do something special for sure. Hey, does that make you feel better? You know what I'm saying? An organization who includes you in information like that. Because I remember when we found out about the hop trade and I told you, 
Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, is, it, is it dramatically different uh, just in the way things are going, the way that y'all operate? Nah, most definitely. It's, it definitely is different. Uh, me and AB got a real good relationship, real tight. So, like, uh, you know, I can go to him about anything. He can come to me about anything. We always straightforward, honest to each other. So, like, uh, yeah, man, it feels good to be able to have that type of, uh, you know, respect and just that that uh, trust, you know, between them. That's super cool. I think that in any relationship for a quarterback to truly be as successful as they need to be, they need to feel like, you know, they got that relationship with the folks that are in the building, you know what I'm saying, that they need to support them. Most definitely. Uh, Kev talked about at the combine how him and Kevin Dorsey were about to pull up on you. How'd that go? Yeah, First time being they Kev, did, man. It, 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 yeah, how'd that go? Hey, he did. Hey, it was a great time. <laughs> We had a great time. I took him right down the street. Excuse me, uh, right down the street, the the little noble on the water, mm-hmm. man, and uh, you know, we chopped it up. You know, of course, we got to know Dorsey, uh, where his background, where he's from, and just how he operate. And of course, I knew Kev. So, and we barely even talked about football, to be honest. Like he said, like we really barely talked about football. Like it was some certain things like that, but that was like. You know, it was just focused on just kind of getting to know each other, really just kicking it and having a good time. That's so funny because, like, the outside looking in, like, you know, seeing Kevin, Kevin Dorsey from 30,000 feet, I can't even imagine what he going to wear to Noble. You know what I'm saying? I just can't imagine <laughs> the fit that he going to put on when he pull up with it. I feel like he going to wear, like, a button-up with a cardigan over it. You know what I'm saying? The yeah. vibe by that. <laughs> He's so smart, though. Like, everybody I know talks about how smart he is. Uh, but it's cool yeah. that you get to meet him. I feel like Kev, I feel like we see Kev one way, but I feel like when he's like, oh, we going to Nobu, he might, you know, say, step out there, put some more real slick, like. Yeah, I mean, they both was, was dressed apart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they had their own little vibe and swag, you can kind of feel it out. But, like, uh, yeah, a lot of people think that Kev is real quiet, I just don't say much, but he real, you know, outside of football, like playing, you know, on the golf course and things like that. Yeah, we be competing, trash talking. And the and the meet rooms, we have a good time. So um, and I enjoy the room that I'm in with those guys, and especially going. I'm looking forward to it with Kevin. Uh, with Ken, also. Man, well, I'm I'm super excited not only about that coaching staff, the relationship you guys are going to continue to build, but while we on that, I wanted you to give the fans a better idea of not only you know all the things that it takes to operate, run an NFL play, but the things that you're doing, what you saw. Like the ins and outs of this big touchdown play from Coop from this past season. Can you can you break it down for me and just let me know, you know, start, stop, pause, whatever. Um, and, and I'm gonna get it from the overall view. And I just wanna know, like, what are we talking about here? Cause people see you running around yelling, you know what I'm saying, yelling at folks, pointing at folks. What does all this stuff mean? You know, you shake your hands, what we got? Yeah, so we got a little situation right here. I, I wanna say this is the fourth quarter. Um, either second or third down, but this was a play, so they were showing this pressure uh, the whole game. So, you know, every team kind of showed their flavor of what they're going to be like, you know, in the first couple third downs early in the game. So we saw this pressure earlier, and they were getting so to us a little bit. What are you bit. seeing? Was this Buddha down in the box? Is that what you saw? That Yeah, really so you, you, got Buddha, you got Buddha down, Buddha down in the box. You got both fly markers mugged up. Uh, I mean, they all across the board, and you got two corners pressed on the outside, safety leaning, and he got the nickel kind of playing off. So I kind of figured, okay, cool, the safety's going to lean. Either he's going to bail back the two or the safety's going to shoot the number one and it's just straight man coverage and they're going to bring a little bit of pressure. But you got you can kind of sense it right here. So Buddha's playing around. So I mm-hmm. max pro because this is what we saw. Me and Coop actually drew this play up on the sideline. Like We saw the pressure, cool. Hey, Coop, we're going all vertical on this play. I'm going to check it, max pro in case they bring the pressure. And you just run past Buddha because what they're doing is just trying to play, you know, give me the slide of protection one way and then they're going to double Coop. But the whole time with Buddha, he's playing around too much and Coop is running full speed. So I'm going to take my man every single time. Mm-hmm. I know it wasn't necessarily man on the field side because nobody is over David. I want to say that's David, if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. or it's Jordan oh. Aikens. I can't, I can't really tell who it is. Nobody's really eyeing him. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, they they, they got to be popping out. But I want the match pro and give Coop a chance. And that's what we did here. We match pro. They bailed out exactly what I thought they were going to do down to the fields, play two. Uh, 
And then up top, they were going to try to double Coop, and I just put the ball out there, and he made a great play. So you're telling me you walk to the line of scrimmage, right? And the first thing you look at, you see this double mug, and then you see Buda Baker yeah. walking down like this, right? So you see that, Correct. you're like, okay, something's funny. Then, after that, you get to, you change, you change Coop, and I think this is Tillman, right? What made you switch their position, one from outside and bring him into the slot, another one from the slot, outside? Like, what was that thought process? So my thought process was, all right, cool. In case Coop is not open, I mm-hmm. can step into it, because we got vertical over here. It's supposed to be uh, a bender by number two. So you got this by number ver- two? Yep, and then you yeah. got vertical on the outside. So I wanted to pit Elijah in the slide and pit Tillman um, a little bit, you know, bigger body on a uh, hole shot on the outside. But I want to pit a little bit more, you know, speed vertical um, on the inside to make that safety make a decision. Okay. Just in case, so, you know, Coop is not open, now I have a play to the field. So you swap them, boom, you got them in the right position. And then you take your eyes directly to Njoku and you just notice that. This is a D lineman here, and like, oh, okay, he definitely can't cover. Is that that's all the things you're thinking about that fan? Yeah, so you can see the two linebackers, too, their eyes. You know, a lot of times you got to find the tendencies of what the linebackers are going to do. What is their tendency? Are they playing man this way? Is he going to pop out and play man this way? So we haven't seen on film how they buff, double mug, and then pop out and still play man. So it's mm-hmm. kind of like, all right, they're going to play some type of two because that's what they got us early in the game. So I just put that in my memory bank. And so when I kept seeing this on third down, I'm like, all right, I know exactly what they're going to do. What are they going to do in a got-to-have-it situation? And this is pretty much like the game was over, but it's pretty much they. this is their last chance. Once we made this play, the ball game was totally over. I, mean, I think it was like 10 minutes left. But they knew right there. They had to make the stop, and this is what they wanted to get to. So is that like the requirement for NFL quarterbacks every single time they come to the line of scrimmage? you got to see the defensive front, what the safeties are doing, what the cornerbacks are doing. What what Buddha Baker is doing? Like, oh, this just looks funny. Are these just things you see through film study? Or is it like I've been playing the NFL so long that I just get it? No, nah, it's all of it though. I feel like it's film study because you can't just sit here and be like, oh, I played ten years in the NFL. I got this shit down pat. Nah, defenses <laughs> are trying their they're you know greasing up their defense as much as possible. You know what I'm saying? They they giving different looks. It's different players. It's different strategies. It's different tendencies. So like. You got to watch tape. You got to watch film. And you got to really study what the defense is trying to do. It's a chess match. So whatever move they make, we got to counter back and make sure we make the right move. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, it's, it's every week. It's a challenge. There's so much more that I think the average fan knows that go into each, every, each individual NFL play, whether it be a big pass like that or you just change it what side of runs are going to, right? So Facts. I think giving people that little bit of knowledge is so helpful, but we're talking about football. We're talking about those big plays you're making. How's the rehab coming along? Rehab going good, man. Uh, 16 weeks out. So, Hello. yeah, four <laughs> months, four months. So, I uh, should be throwing it real, real soon. Um, and I'm super excited about that. But, you know, you know, thank God for the, the speedy process uh, that he's been giving me uh, when it comes to the healing part. And uh, just staying, staying on track of that. And if I can do that, then we'll be, we'll be just fine. It's so cool to hear, like, not only are you on track, but you're ahead of schedule. Haven't started throwing yet. Uh, I'm not going to say when you're throwing, but I will say that I've purchased my first ticket to Los Angeles, California. <laughs> I'm going to yeah, tell the yeah, folks that. Man. Oh, you're thinking, man, yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, sure. so we're getting ready. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Sure. Uh, Always, always fun for me to go through yep. each individual offseason with you, right? It's it's a journey. I feel like so many times we get to think about different things, right? Coming off of ACL, coming off this, coming off that, right? It's always a different challenge that we have. And then I'm currently going through every single one of your throws from last season. I know that we can't – we can start moving the way we want, but we really get a chance to start – start the throwing process and doing it the right way, making sure that we're getting yeah. everything in line because it's been so long since you've thrown. I am, I am, I'm hype about it, right? So uh, I'm just appreciative of you. Let me go through that journey for you. Uh, I'm nah, journey I appreciate with you. you not for you, hey, but nah. I get to do it with you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, A lot of sir. flights, but it's, uh, it's always worth it 
Sundays when I get to cut on the TV, watch watch you do your thing. I appreciate you. It's a big one for sure. The biggest. I I know you're not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say it. I got Super Bowl expectations for this Cleveland Browns team. You know, I'm really hoping I see a uh, a Cleveland Browns Seattle Seahawks Super Bowl. That's mm-hmm. gonna make me happy. We need to get yeah. Gino on the show. Gino <laughs> said he's down, so we gonna get him right. But let right, bet, us bet. hop into my favorite segment, the Q4 segment. We yes, close serious. out the show with a list of top fours from Deshaun Watson. <laughs> Who's four quarterbacks that you think deserve to be in the Hall of Fame who are not in the Hall of Fame yet? You gotta give me some names. Shoot, we got Cam, we got Eli, we got Roethlisberger, we got uh, Drew Brees. Drew Brees isn't the Hall of Fame yet, right? I don't think we so. We got Matt Ryan. We got Matt Ryan. You know what's Ryan. crazy? He never won a he never won an MVP. Oh, I don't think Drew Brees uh, ever won an MVP. Drew Brees? No, he didn't. Does Russell Man. Wilson go to the? Does Russell Wilson is he Hall of Famer? Like, you know, there's so many questions about guys who are like, like Matt Ryan to me is a Hall of Famer, but I also think yeah, Cam like Newton's a Hall of Famer. I like. I like Cam. I like Matt Ryan. I like Philip Rivers. I like Big Ben. Ooh, you think those four? That's a, that's four. Are you gonna try and go yeah. extra? Or what are we doing? Um, I know some of these dudes ain't eligible for the Hall of Fame yet, but the people we facts. talk about, like the people you see, like who, the, who, this is the four. Do, so you only get four out of all that. Do Andrew Luck make the Hall of Fame? No. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> so I thought you was gonna say something else. I thought you were gonna say no, something. No, no, no. Easy. I thought you were going I, to be I don't like, want to yeah. take away. I don't want to take anything away from him as a talent because I love Andy Luck, great player. I just don't Wait, think he played. Why did he retire though? This is getting his ass kicked. Like he just took too many hits. I, I thought think. he had it. so he wasn't like hurt, hurt though. He wasn't like hurt, hurt. No, I thought he was going to come back that year where he retired. Right? It, it seemed to me oh, like he wow. was just tired of going through the rehab process. Like, he kept getting banged up. To me, That's four quarterbacks list, who might not get in the Hall of Fame, who I want in there. I need uh I need Cam Newton. He might not get yeah. in, and I want him in there. I think Ben is definitely gonna get in there. Matt Ryan might not get in, he gotta get in there. Really? Why? Because of what? Matt Ryan was dominant for a long time. I think that he is so under a long time. A long, I used to he watch him. He was a ball boy. Yeah, yeah, he was a ball boy, and then I he did. played against him. Yeah, which is crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was his ball boy. Like, anytime he wasn't throwing <laughs> passes, foe. Oh, at the time, they called me uh, QB. QB, get in. Yeah. Like, Clemson, get in. You throw. So I was the one throwing to Roddy White, Julio <laughs> Jones, uh, Harry Douglas. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was the guy, so it was dope. You know what I'm saying? I was in the locker room with the guys. So, you know, just to see his process and then be able to play against him, too, it's like, damn, that shit was fire. But I think he should be in. Yo, do you ever, do you ever he, had Atlanta, he had Atlanta lit, though. <laughs> Hello. Good old boy do you ever think rolling. about like, what you're going to need to do to make the, make a gold jacket? Do you ever think about that? Or are you just like, I'm going to just play and see what happens? Yeah, of course. I, you know, I think about it. And that's shit. And that comes with, get, got to get back on, on the grind. Gotta, you know what I'm saying? Super Bowl. Got to get, get a ring. Got to get a ring. Got to get a ring. Then it's like, yeah, that's mandatory. Well, now so, we talking. You know, I got to do whatever I can. Yeah, for sure. I, I trust me. I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this is the perfect opportunity, perfect organization, perfect teammates, group of guys that I can do it with. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, as far as I go, everybody go. You know what I'm saying? As far as I go, it helps Miles out. It helps, you know. Denzel out, it helps Grant out, you know what I'm saying? It helps like everybody out, so, um, and vice versa. So, you know, we all in the stand together, but for sure, you yes. gotta get that ring. Yes, sir. And that was a Q4 segment. Deshaun Watson, myself, Quincy Avery, tap in, subscribe, like, do all that stuff that we need so you can get the content we provide out here at Lockerverse. Tap in.